Welcome to the first video in our Elden Ring combat series guide. That's right, this first video, we're gonna show you all of the available moves and abilities in Elden Ring so you can take advantage of them. Because the gosh darn tutorial does not teach you this stuff if you happen to stumble upon the tutorial to begin with. And there's a ton of stuff that's kind of hidden behind combination of button presses so that you can get special moves out of your attacks. A lot of these abilities are really useful and just straight up fun. And this is what makes Elden Ring's combat system so deep, expressive, and unique. <sighs> So watch the whole video to find out if there's some moves that you don't know. Let's dive in. Now, generally speaking, there are four main buttons you'll be attacking with in Elden Ring. You've got your R1 right hand light attack, your R2 right hand heavy attack, your L1 left hand light attack or dual wield move set, and then your left trigger Ash of War or special move set. On top of that, when you are sprinting, rolling, backstepping, jumping, dual wielding, or two-handing weapons, you're going to do completely different moves when pressing those buttons. Now, before we jump into all the attacks and button combos, I want to quickly go over equipping weapons while playing. If you didn't know, you can equip up to three weapons in either hand. The first row of your equipment menu is your right hand, and the second row is your left hand. Whatever weapon you want to use your Ash of War or Special Attack with, you want to place in your right hand. You can cycle through your weapons by pressing on the D-pad in the direction of your corresponding hand during combat. Additionally, you can put things like throwing knives and weapon pots in your quick slots to be used during combat by pressing your quick use button, the same one that drinks a flask. Okay, now let's dive into all the attacks in this game and tips on how to use them. R1 Light Attack this always controls your right hand weapon. It's quick and normal damage. Your R1 light attack is usually a quick attack that is good for when you're in the heat of combat and you need to quickly deal damage without taking damage. You can often do a quick attack and then get back to shielding or dodging without much risk. It's good for sneaking in a little bit of damage quickly. Against highly aggressive enemies, sometimes this is the most you can afford to do in close range. Oftentimes you can spam R1 light attacks against weak enemies with no shield to stun lock them to death. Then there's your R2 heavy attack. This always controls your right hand weapon. It's powerful and slow. Your R2 heavy attack is more for the opening of fights or when you have space from your enemy. This is because it usually has a bit of a wind up. R2 charged attack by holding R2 down, it's powerful but slow. Charged heavy attacks are good for when an enemy is approaching you and you think you can time your charged attack to hit them right when they get in range. So it's really good for big knights approaching you with a shield and beginning their attack. Warning, you're probably gonna trade damage when you do this. Charged attacks are also good for sneaking up behind enemies and hitting them in the back. Some enemies cannot be backstabbed or critical hit when snuck up on, so this is a good alternative to that. Anytime you hit an enemy in the back when they're not aware of you, you'll deal extra damage, not just when landing a critical hit. Then you have your L1 light attack or equipment use, such as shield block or spell cast. This also becomes a block move when you're two-handing a weapon. You also use this button for dual wielding or power stancing weapons, which I'll explain later. If you have a shield in your hand, which I recommend for most beginning players or players who have low health points, then pressing L1 will block attacks at the cost of stamina. If you're blocking when an enemy hits you with a fast attack, it will do a soft counter attack, which will cause the enemy's weapon to bounce off the shield and leave them exposed for a brief moment. It's like a light parry with a lot less risk. L1 is usually what you'll be using to cast spells and can sometimes be held down to charge up the spell for a more powerful attack. Now, if you wanna be a wizard, you'll wanna know how to use spells. There are two main categories of spells in this game. Sorceries require a staff to be equipped, while incantations require a seal to be equipped. When resting at a site of grace, you can memorize spells for use during combat. These can be cycled through by pressing up on your D-pad. And finally, your special L2 attack, AKA weapon art or Ash of War, which can sometimes be used as a priming button to two different R1 or R2 special weapon art attacks. A note about special attacks or Ashes of War. Every weapon has a weapon art or Ash of War attached to it unless you apply the no skill Ash of War which I highly recommend doing for shields so that you can put a shield in your left hand and still use your right hand weapon for special attacks. Most weapons allow you to change your special weapon art move 
by changing the Ash of War on the weapon. This is always free to do and there's no repercussions or cost for changing weapon arts. Some weapons have a unique Ash of War that cannot be changed though. Playing with different Ashes of War is a really fun aspect of the game and I highly encourage it. Ash of War montage! You'll be using this a lot during combat because typically it's essential to your combat tactics and staying alive. If you're fighting powerful enemies, you'll most likely be using your weapon art, Ash of War, to attack them during openings. This will use focus points, your blue mana bar under your health, but usually it doesn't cost too much and can be refilled with a cerulean flask, the blue flask. I highly recommend hunting for lots of different Ashes of War and trying them out. There's a ton of different use cases for each of them. Sometimes they're just raw damage or apply a status effect to an enemy or yourself. Other times they make you highly mobile and allow you to break an enemy's defense easier. Now let's get into button combo attacks. There's the heavy jump attack by pressing jump and R2 while in the air, which is fast and powerful, but when you land, it leaves you open to attack from enemies. Now, the jumping R2 attack is really good for opening a fight and breaking poise. It's a fast attack with a lot of power behind it, but it requires that you be airborne and causes you to land and be immobile for a moment. It deals more damage than a normal R2 heavy attack. Great for doing damage through shields as well. Since I mentioned poise, I want to quickly explain that mechanic in relation to your attacks. Jump attacks, charged heavy attacks, ash of war attacks, two-handed attacks, and dual-wielded power stance attacks are great for reducing enemy poise and ultimately breaking their stance. Poise can be thought of as an invisible bar that all characters have that when filled will cause them to collapse and become available for a critical hit. It's also tied to your remaining stamina. This works on bosses and most other creatures in the world, including yourself. Generally, the heavier an armor someone is wearing, the more poise they have, which requires more powerful attacks to break their poise. Okay, now let's get back to our combo attacks. Jumping R1 attacks, which are light attacks, do more damage than a normal R1 light attack, but not as much as an R2 heavy attack. It's good for closing a gap quickly without making yourself immobile when you land. There's a rolling attack by pressing roll and R1 light. This can also be done by simply crouching and pressing R1. This usually opens up a unique weapon attack that's different from most of your weapon moves, like a thrust or a sweep attack. Rolling attacks are often good when enemies are chasing you and you wanna quickly turn around and deal damage or for closing the gap. Sometimes this is a unique move that is either good for dealing with groups like a wide sweep attack or a unique move like a thrust that is good for extending the range of your weapon. This is great because you can also just crouch to activate the same attack. You can do it during normal combat if you just quickly crouch and then press R1 light attack. Then there's the sprinting attack by pressing sprint and R1 light. This does slightly more damage than a normal attack and usually has a different style that can be utilized. Some weapons also have unique R2 heavy sprint attacks with a different style. The sprinting attack is good for running circles around enemies and baiting out their attacks, then quickly running in and hitting them as a counter attack. It's also good for running through groups and taking enemies by surprise or flanking around them. Take advantage of whatever sprint move your weapon provides. Then there's the backstep attack by pressing dodge and R1 light. Backsteps only happen when you aren't moving your toggle in any direction and then you press dodge. This usually does more damage and can have a unique moveset. Backstep attacks are great for baiting out enemy attacks as they move towards you and then countering with a backstep move. This is especially great if you have a thrust move on your weapon to do long range poke damage. Keep in mind you have to be completely standing still and press the dodge button to do a backstep. So this is a totally defensive move. Then there's your R1 critical hit done by sneaking up on an enemy from behind or when their stance is broken. Note, you have to walk up straight behind them with your toggle going directly forward. You can even walk into them with your chest touching their back and they're not going to notice. Or just stand still directly behind them. Then tap the R1 light attack button to start the critical hit animation. Same for when their stance is broken. When you're in this animation of a critical hit, you become invincible. So that's useful when other enemies are attacking after a critical hit because they can't hurt you. Oftentimes it'll also stagger the other enemies at the end of the animation if they're close to you. Okay, now the fun stuff. Let's talk about dual wielding, 
or better known as power stancing. If you are dual wielding two weapons of the same type, you unlock a whole new set of moves for your L1 light attacks, and you can now utilize unique jump attacks, roll attacks, sprint attacks, etc. This is called power stancing a set of weapons, and it's one of the coolest features in Elden Ring and Souls games because it adds a whole new level of combat variety. You don't have to have two of the exact same weapon, just the same type of weapon or category. If the weapon types don't match, you won't get the special move set, and you'll just be attacking with your left hand. Now, bear in mind, for most beginning players with low HP, I would recommend using a shield in your left hand, because if you don't, you'll have to dodge every attack or die. Okay, so new moves to use while power stancing with L1 or the light trigger are jump attacking with L1, which becomes a devastating double hit, Rolling or crouching with L1 also usually does a quick double hit. Sprinting with L1 usually does a quick double sweep attack, followed by a normal double attack. So I encourage you to try dual wielding weapons of the same type and see if you can find new moves that are good against certain types of enemies. All right, now we have two-handing weapons. When you two-hand a weapon by holding your activate button and then pressing either L1 or R1 to two-hand that appropriate weapon, you will increase your strength stat by 50% for the weapon you're holding, which allows you to use weapons that require more strength than you have. But it also opens up new moves for your R1 and R2 attacks and makes your L1 light attack act as a block attack, which can negate a good chunk of damage, especially on larger weapons. I'll try to quickly cover bow attacks. A bow can be equipped in your left hand or right hand, but it must always be two-handed. Crossbows can be one-handed. You must equip arrows or bolts in your equipment slots, which are fired with either your R1 or R2 button if the bow or crossbow is in your right hand. You can also zoom in with L1 when holding a bow in your right hand, and do your special Ash of War attack with L2, which can usually be charged up for more power. You can also do quick attacks by doing jump attacks and roll attacks with R1. Finally, there is horseback combat, which is pretty straightforward. When you get on your horse, it will default to your right hand weapon. You can switch weapons by pressing your activate button and then left bumper or vice versa. While on horseback, you can do light attacks for each side of your horse or heavy attacks. The heavy attack can actually be charged by holding it down and it will do damage before the attack actually begins. This is great for hunting animals, especially with a twin blade or a flail. All right, guys, that was a pretty exhaustive list of different moves you can do with weapons in this game. I think that goes to show you how deep the combat mechanics are in this game, and we've only just covered the button presses. In our next videos, we'll be covering combat tactics, strategies, and effects. So be sure to be subscribed and click the bell to be notified when those videos come out. Thanks for watching. Good luck in the lands between Shinobi.